Hello and a very warm welcome to Finland and our continuing coverage of the 2021 BWF Sudermann Cup. Tremendous venue here, just autumn, well, becoming winter pretty soon I think in this part of the world, but no snow has arrived so far and we have had some uh, terrific action right through the week. We started on Sunday, seems a long time again, ago now at the uh, Energia Arena. And from here on in, of course, it is Knockout Badminton. You'll see every single shot of every single match. So we look down on what's going to be the venue for Sunday's final. Semis will be tomorrow, and today it's the quarterfinals. If you've been with us earlier, well, you've had yeah, an absolute treat this morning with two matches that went the distance. So China, Thailand, India and Finland were in Group 1. Um, the Chinese still going strong. The Thais just lost out uh, just a few minutes ago, actually. Uh, Korea have come through. We'll see Chinese Taipei in a moment. Uh, they will be up against Japan, who came through as the winners of Group D. And uh, the Danes in Group C were narrowly beaten by China. Both matches today, both the first two quarterfinals, went 3-2. So let's uh, let you know exactly what's in store this afternoon. If you're going to stick with us, uh, it's Chinese Taipei against Japan. That match I was telling you about earlier, China 3, Denmark 2, and the last match was the mixed doubles. And the Danes actually started really well in that match. In the end, they lost in straight games. It's a case of what might have been, what could have been, maybe even what should have been, as far as Denmark were concerned. But the Chinese, the defending champions, go marching on into the semi-finals. Now our match, which starts momentarily, the Japanese will start favourites, and rightly so, uh, but Chinese Taipei have sprung a few shocks in the past, and it wouldn't be the biggest surprise if they were to turn over the Japanese. That's our offering then, court one for the second session of the quarterfinals. So what's coming up today? Well, we're kicking off with the men's doubles. Uh, it's going to be Li Wei and Yang Po Xuan against uh, Akira Koga and Taichi Saito. Maybe somewhat surprising the Japanese have put that doubles pair in. They did beat Lane and Vendi of England a few days ago, but it wasn't convincing. Uh, then we'll see Akane Yamaguchi. Now, you can't think that Pai Yu Po will upset the odds here, but you never know. Yamaguchi hasn't lost to the Chinese Taipei woman for seven years since they were, oh, I think, in their middle eight teens. Uh, their third match uh, on court uh, is, well, looks the star attraction, doesn't it, really? Uh, Chao Tian Chen against Kento Momota, uh, world rank number four against the world rank number one and double world champion. Momota's got a 7 2 head to head against uh, Chao. Uh, the women's doubles is next, and again, Matsumoto and uh, Matsutomo, you would imagine, uh, would come through that relatively comfortably. And then if it's required, uh, we'll have the mixed doubles. Because of course, unlike the group stage, now if it goes three love or three one, so basically first team to three, we'll automatically uh, go through. We won't play any of the dead runners. Just a slight delay because obviously, as I mentioned, those two quarterfinals this morning uh, were both very long matches, nearly six hours. But the officials are out on court and uh, just doing the player introductions, as you can see. And we're kicking off here with the men's doubles. And this is an absolutely pivotal match from a Chinese Taipei's point of view, you would imagine. Because obviously, Yamaguchi and Momota will be the favourites in the two singles which follow this match. So if Chinese Taipei don't win this, then clearly they might have an uphill struggle. However, you would probably make Li and Yang favourites, although not much in it, not much uh, between the rankings at all. 29 plays 27. Chinese players on their way out. Well, Japanese, I meant, sorry. 
light up these courts quite spectacularly, don't they? And we certainly had two spectacular quarterfinals this morning. Let's see if this can live up to to those two. As mentioned, Japan will start favourite clearly, but Chinese Taipei more than capable of springing a shock. So masks off and prepare for battle. Amazing to think only three nations have ever won the Sudaman Cup. China 11 times, South Korea four times and Indonesia once. So Japan and maybe Chinese Taipei as well might very well think this is their time. So let's have a look at some of the players then. Uh, Li Zhu Wei who is uh, 27 now and ranked to 29. Of course, he had a successful doubles pairing with uh, Li Yang and won the French Open back in uh, 2017. You see, they're up to seven in the world at one point. Li and Yang are now a new pairing with uh, Yang Po Suan. couple of years younger than his partner. Actually runner-up in the uh, Chinese Taipei Open with Wu Tijung a few years ago. The 26 is the highest he has been ranked with his current partner. Just played the one match uh, these two. That was against the Germans. They came through straight games in just over half an hour against Lemsfus and Seidel. So, on to Japan, uh, Kira Koga and Taichi Saito. There is Koga, 27 years of age. That 27 ranking is the best that he has attained. They've actually been runner-up in uh, three Super 100 events, this pair. Uh, all in 2019. And his partner is Taishi Saito. Those three events I was telling you about, they won in uh, Orléans, uh, Akita and Indonesia. Just the one match for them as well, that was against England where they came through against Lane and Vendy, but not without a few scares in three games. Iris Metzpelu of Estonia is the chair umpire and she will be supported by Cody Leach of the USA, he's the service judge. Just get the feeling this is a really pivotal match to open the tie, especially from a Chinese Taipei point of view. So if they don't win here, they're going to be in potentially trouble, big trouble, with uh, Yamaguchi and Imamata up next for Japan. And then they've got their brilliant women's doubles pairing. So absolutely critical. Stand by them for the player introductions from the chair umpire.
So here we go, first shuttle hit in anger in this quarter-final between Chinese Taipei and Japan. Yeah, nicely put away. Koga very quick to pounce on that opportunity. I think that's the, the way that Li and Yang are going to be successful in this match is to go offensively on the front foot like that. The longer the rallies wear on, I think it will probably favour the Japanese pair. That's nicely placed. Spotted the opening Koga, unguarded area of the court and found it beautifully. Good example, you don't always have to hit the lines when there's uh, an opportunity like that. Good judgment from Taichi Saito. I remember a few eyebrows raised when the team lists were, or the, the match list was put in with these names. They might have gone with another men's doubles pair, but faith shown in Koga and Saito. Excellent poaching at the net. Oh, a lovely deception from the back of the court. Starting to mix it up a little bit now. Chinese Taipei, this pair. Can't play that shot any better than that. It's cleared the net and died. I think we'll see too many errors like that from Koga. Actually played very well in that match against uh, Lane and Vendy. Any time we've seen this pair so far in in this competition. Always looked on paper this match like it was going to be fairly tight. Not just because the world rankings are pretty similar, 29 to 27. Just in the way that we've seen them play, each played one match this week. And we, they just look, well, there's not much between them. We'll see, six all. 
So it's time, Saito went for the flicker and it worked for him. His opponent was expecting that. Well, that time it was Saito applying the pressure. Work from Lee. This looks to me as though they might be having a, a little problem with the drift at the moment, the Chinese Taipei pair. So good to have some spectators in. Yes, a lot of them are fellow squad members and coaches, but we do have. Probably the biggest crowd we've had uh, in this tournament so far. Capacity is restricted for obvious reasons. Yeah, I think... Um, Koga actually thought Saito might have got there. By the time he realised he wasn't going to get there, his partner, it was too late. Always takes time to establish a pairing, obviously. Well, it was good defence from Lee in particular. And then the error came from the Japanese. And from 9-7 down, Chinese Taipei have got themselves in front. Yeah, good placement. So there was a gap there. So last point before the interval, absolutely nothing between them. Again goes for the flicker. And good leave. So it is the Chinese Taipei pair of Li and Yang who have the tightest of advantages as they go for the interval. Smith's fellow of Estonia getting the match restarted after the interval. Oh, nicely done with a flick serve. Put them in charge of the point early. It's well thought out there. Just look there as if Saito might have found it tough to pick up the line of the shuttle there.
Yeah, just starting to have a problem now, aren't they? Koga and Saito. I'm not picking the serve. Was excellent from Yang. From the service line, it was never coming back. And after a bright start, the Japanese are starting to get dominated here. That's four points. Four straight points after the interval. They were nine seven up, remember. They've won eight of the last nine points. The men in red. He wanted to go and change his racket. He went the wrong side. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that. <laughs> and he realised... <laughs> that was funny. He's finally got an, a new weapon, or he's about to choose one. But still in a very good position here. The uh, Chinese Taipei pair in the first match of this tie. Well, that's almost a collector's item. Unforced error from Lee. I haven't made many of those. Lightning quick uh, match so far. It's only, what are we, 13 minutes in, and then towards the conclusion of this opening game, potentially. did give them the momentum in the rally but even so just outplaying their opponents at the moment
good rally. Brilliant defence from the Japanese here. <laughs> well, Koga was trying to change his racket. Then he saw the shuttle was coming in his direction. He went for the full length dive. I mean, it's fantastic commitment. Let's watch this. Throws the one away, gets the new one, sees the shuttle. It's never getting there. Never getting there. Talk about putting your body on the line for your country. First rally we've had over 50 shots. So here are seven game points to Lee and Yang. Probably uh, more than they deserved actually. 21-13 could have easily been by a bigger margin, but it was really impressive, Liam, Li and Yang. And it's given Koga and Saito a lot to think about here. Just 16 minutes. I don't think the coach will have to say a great deal, to be honest. More of the same, please, gentlemen, will be the message. One of those games where it always seemed to come to Koga at a very awkward height. Saw that four or five times in that game. So here we go, game two, and the uh, Japanese pair in need of a big improvement, and maybe uh, a change of tactics as well. Wang serving. That's been one of the features of this match, the way that Li and Yang have moved the Japanese pair around the court and created openings. Certainly Koga and Saito just can't afford to allow Li and Wang to make a, a lightning fast start. Surprising miss from Yang. Koga coming to the party.
<laughs> well, it was stoic defence from Koga and Saito, but in the end they had to give best to a, almost an onslaught from Li and Yang. Trickshot got it back, but only a stay of execution, a brief one at that. Well, it was called in, it was on the line from here. They are going to challenge it, though, and so for the first time this afternoon, we're going to see what uh, Hawkeye has to say. Always looked like it caught the back, back of the line, and indeed it did. Wide by distance. Well, he hasn't missed many of those. Almost look of disbelief that that found the net from Yang. It's been an admirable offensive display so far from two uh, Chinese Taipei men. Well, that's just clumsy, really. When you've lost the first game and really can't afford to fritter points away like that. That's more like it. Softened up by Yang and Lee applying the coup de grace. Those drop shots have been key haven't read them at all, the Japanese pair, they've pushed them back and they've thrown in the, the little perfectly weighted drop shot.
and so much looked too easy at times and all of a sudden there's a bit of a gap on that scoreboard four point cushion now as we approach the interval in game two need a lot more of that if in doubt hit it straight down the middle you can see them almost pointing accusatory rackets at each other there Li and Yang each leaving it to the other So it's a handy lead nonetheless, three point advantage for Li Zhu Wei and Yang Pursuan as they go for the interval. And frankly, no more than they've deserved on the balance of play so far. again played that shot so well and the Japanese pair just haven't had an answer really real precision from Yang by the time Konka realised it was way too late Well, that's great reaction from there again. Just long, though. Thought he'd made it for a moment. <laughs> So a challenge. And how much of this is, des is a desperation move, I wonder. Let's have a look. It's called in. Oh, that's a great challenge. Two challenges per game, per pair, and obviously if you're correct, you keep you keep the challenge. Every time that Koga and Saito kind of semi-threaten to get back into this, Oi and Yang just whip the rug away from under their feet.
<laughs> nice trick shot. In the eight. Oh, great play. Lee covered so much ground there. This play was like a, a singles player for a moment. His partner kind of out of commission. That's long though, and a big point for the Japanese pair. That gone 14-10, uh, you'd have started to seriously be concerned for them. Still riding this second game. Just rally the match. Yeah, nice teamwork, Lee and Yang. It's against Lee that pushed them back initially. Wang with the decisive shot. Well, that's a bit careless though. From a Japanese point of view, we haven't seen enough of that from either Koga or Saito. Koga's probably been the more aggressive from the back of the court of the two. And a few concerned uh, Japanese squad members and coaches, I think, there. Well, they're going to challenge. Serb was uh, called out. Didn't see too many of these challenges off the serve. <laughs> out by a country mile. <laughs> Maybe they just wanted a drink spray.
Well, the left court gave him a little bit of assistance, but I think they were pretty much in charge of the point at any rate. Powerless there, Koga. Do anything about that? Just couldn't quite get low enough, but it was pretty low. So, uh, threatening a little bit of a comeback here. Koga and Saito. Having looked, uh, well not quite down and out, but certainly second best for much of this match. And yet again, as soon as they get within range on the scoreboard, they get cut off at the pass. Well, potentially closing in here, just the two more points required for an opening victory for Chinese Taipei. Long. Oh, good pressure. Saito certainly hasn't given this up yet. Three points in a row. And now the furrowed brows are on the uh, watching Chinese Taipei contingent. This is a massive point coming up. Game point then. To level the match. Now yeah, they're smiling again. What a topsy-turvy second game this. First game was all Li and Yang. Dominated at the start of the second game, but maybe it's uh, lost a bit of nerve here. The finish line so close. Well done. Every other point now, it's either going to be a game point or a match point. That <laughs> dropped in. You can see the reaction there, the look on Koga's face. And a match point for the pair from Chinese Taipei. And that will do. 22 20 in the second game. And I don't think uh, Japan can have uh, too many complaints, in all honesty. Just the start that Chinese Taipei needed. With the two singles coming up next. And Japan favourite to win them. 40 minutes.
the match tie. They survived that mini comeback from Koga and Saito. And in the end, their class won the day. I think those two will look back on the first game and wonder what happened. It was so one-sided. This was the moment, or the point, which confirmed the victory. Just a bit slow to react to the serve, it looked. Pushed it into the net. So, first blood here to Chinese Taipei, but up next, it's the women's singles. Yamaguchi in a moment. Well, welcome back to the Energy Arena. It's quarterfinals day at the 2021 BWF Sudaman Cup. And we've just had the first match of Chinese Taipei versus Japan. And it's gone the way of Chinese Taipei. Two loving games, Li and Yang seeing off Koga and Saito. So that's put a little bit of pressure on one of the best women players in the world, Akane Yamaguchi, who's up next. <laughs> 